Paul, great to have you here at Noise11.com uh, talking about Custard and a brand new album, a double album. A we'll double get... album? Yep. Just what the world needs, a double album of Custard songs. Well, when you yeah. think about it, I mean, think about the great double albums of all time. You had, what, uh, Rolling this, Stones, they call Main is... Street? This is not one of the great double albums of all time. <laughs> You're not starting off by selling this in a positive <laughs> way. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty good, but it's not, you know, all right, it's great. Okay. It's fantastic. No. All right, take two. We're starting all over again. No, we're not <laughs> going to run the first bit. And I say the new Custard album is one of the great double albums up there with Exile on Main Street, the Beatles White Album. And, uh, oh, yeah, that's and- the one. And Jimmy Henry and, and Pink Floyd's The Wall. Yeah. I, I, I think this album is an al- amalgamation of all those albums and we, we've channeled the the best of the best and distilled it into what is finally the uh, epitome of the double album. This is just going to blow everyone's <laughs> minds. This is going to be huge. <laughs> Let's uh, let's get into a few statistics because here we are, thirty-five years down the track of when oh Custard Lord. Gun yeah. formed. All right, that was nineteen eighty-nine. Yep. In nineteen eighty-nine, if I was interviewing someone from a band from thirty-five years earlier in nineteen eighty-nine when you mm. guys formed, that would be nineteen fifty-four. The biggest acts in the world at the time were Perry Como, Rosemary Clooney, Doris Day, Frank Sinatra, and Johnny O'Keefe was still three years away from having his debut single. Isn't it wild? Like, isn't that just crazy? You you would not I, have I, thought, I, would you? No, you would not have thought. And I, I don't know what it says about the world or the music industry that, you know, um, yeah, I often think about that. It's like, things happen so quickly in those first kind of 20, 30 years of music and now we just seem to be, I don't know, there's still bands like us doing the... <laughs> that's a, that's <laughs> actually a good thing. Yeah. I guess well, you- so. I mean, it's good for us. I'm not complaining. It's good for us, but, you know, it's interesting. It's an interesting cultural thing. Well, you weren't uh, Custard Gun for long. Custard Gun became Custard, no. and it stayed that way for the past uh, 34 years, I think. There was a hiatus yeah. 2000 to 2009. Did you use the word hiatus right. or the word breakup at that point? Oh, it was definitely a breakup. Were it there was, tears? Yeah, it was. Oh, I, I think I had a tear. I think I had a tear, but, you know, I, I think we were just all a little bit burnt out and a little bit sick of each other and a little bit over the whole thing um and you know it, it, it felt probably right that we broke up when we did but it also felt perfect when we got back together again so yeah, well, we needed that little time apart i think that uh that uh, part one of custard generated five albums and here we are with molecules colliding because it's a double yeah. album we can count yes. it as two. That makes another five. So you've oh, got. You, you, you could do that. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're exactly in the middle now. You've got Custard Part One with five albums versus Custard Part Two with five. Custard part Two. I know. Oh, that's it. We're going to have to break up again for another 10 years and then do <laughs> Custard Part Three. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Maybe reconsider that at the moment. Uh, let's. <laughs> Let's talk 1989 and lyrics. I first right met you at your sister's invitation, 1989, uh, Molecules right. Lighting tells us. So is that a reference to all getting back together for the first No, time? I think that's a, I, I No, I have no idea. That's a Glenn song. So Glenn wasn't around in 1989. So I, I, I think that must be a personal reference. Oh, but we can make that connection. We can, we, we can, we can do, we can play that. That's good. I think he was uh, all right. He was um, psychically channeling the fact that he would end up in casted. I don't know there down the go. track. Yeah, know. down the track. Yeah, he was he, he was channeling Mole- molecules collide. So you know, it's got that whole quantum physics thing. Time can go either way. You know, all that stuff. So well, that's that true. Works. That's true. So it could be what I say. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There's no it's, wrong answers. It's uh, It's got some amazing flavours to it, that song. You know, I'm hearing 80s synth pop, but I'm also hearing mm-hmm. 
remnants of the Rolling Stones' Sympathy for the Devil, mm-hmm. the who, who in there. Who, who, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, is that kind of a musical reference to the DNA that this band sort of is based on, like the previous 20 years from 1989 yeah. would have been all of that 80s uh, Britpop, synthpop sounds Indeed, dating yeah. back to... 1968, 1969, uh, Rolling Stone's Sympathy for the Devil, and you've uh, seemed to have taken all of what happened in that 20-year period and condensed it into one song here. I agree, Paul. I absolutely agree. I, 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 and, and I think a lot of this new record is like that. I think it is a, is a, is a distillation of all our um, earlier, you know, musical loves our, and... and all all those things that you mention are all things that we all love and I, I just love the way on this record a lot of that stuff has just organically kind of happened. Um, yeah, I, I think it's good. It, it, th- there was no conscious effort to do anything at all on this record. It's just, just the way it turned out. So part of the fun for me is kind of, yeah, spotting those references. David, you've stolen that song, haven't you? Glenn, you know, all that stuff. So it's fun. And I, I, don't, I, don't, I, think, I think you probably do that with most Custard songs. If you listen very carefully, you can probably figure out where we stole it from. But music has always been a relay race, hasn't it? I mean, you know, you can uh, oh, talk yeah. about ACDC, but you track it back to Chuck Berry, you know, with uh, yeah, yeah, the yeah, Beatles, exactly, back exactly. to Little Richard, the Rolling Stones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, like yeah, yeah, everybody yeah. is derivative from somebody else anyway. And that's the way it is, and that's the way it's always going to be. Um, I, I, uh, I think the trick is to just let those influences happen rather than consciously trying to do something, you know, that that's derivative or referencing, you know. Um, and and I, th- I think Custer does that well and just this is what we like and we've all got a really broad taste in music and it kind of just all falls in together somehow. Mm. Molecules Collide is the first single off the album. Mm-hmm. Uh, comes very yep. late into the track listing on the album. You know, we don't uh, we don't see it pop up when we're listening to the record until side four. On the uh, on the double four. vinyl, I I love hearing that side four. That's <laughs> fantastic. Yeah, isn't that that, that that I know, I know. Uh, I, I, I think I'm not sure how we came up with the track listing. I think I think it just again it was just like well, let's just see what kind of fits together and and whack it out. So there's not a lot of um, strategy apart from what sounds good. Getting on to another track. Um... Uh, Someday with Serena Ryder. Let's talk about the Someday yep. with Serena Ryder track. She's Canadian. What's her association with Custard? How did that come about? Well, you know, you know what? I I I didn't even know who Serena Ryder was until about three weeks ago when when Paul Curtis asked me to to write a little blurb for um for the new single Someday. And so I, you know, I put it in chat GPT and said, wrote, you know, write a blurb, um, someday featuring Serena Ryder. And chat GPT comes up with all this stuff about this Canadian singer who's platinum selling in Canada and she's huge. And and I contacted David and said, is this right? Who is it? And so now I know who Serena Ryder is. So, yeah, David wrote that song with her like, like, yeah, I, I know very little about it. Apparently, he wrote it with her like twenty years ago. Um, bought it back for this record. Contacted Serena; she had a sing on it, and there we go. Now I love her; she's awesome. <laughs> that uh, kind of suggests that there is a custard vault. You know, if you can go back into the vault and find a song from twenty years ago, what else is in that vault? I have no idea. I have no idea. There must be some exciting stuff there. Yeah, the unreleased custard album. I know, I know. We're, well, after we break up and get back together, then we'll go through the vaults. Well, you don't you don't and, need to wait until you break up. I mean, the Rolling Stones ran out of ideas in 1980 and went right back through all of the sessions of the 70s and compiled it into what we now know as Tattoo You. I love that record. How good is that record? Yeah, but it's just leftovers from sessions from the past. Yeah, I know. Years. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. It can be done, Paul. It can be done. It can be done. Yeah. 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 I, don't, I, I don't know. Mm. I, 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 don't, I think. I think. I think we're all still writing new good stuff. So maybe we don't have to do that. Maybe we do. I don't know. Let's see how this record goes. Well, a song like uh, "Someday" is very power pop. Is that the right term to use? Yeah, power pop. I think we were going for a, a kind of a Susie Quattro kind of "Can't Give Me Love" kind of vibe on that one. Um, so it, it, back to that kind of seventies um, guitar poppy, country poppy kind of stuff. So I think it's got that kind of DNA in it. That song. You're not shy in going back to those influences from the late seventies, early eighties. I think uh, the Buggles. Video Kill the Radio Stars popped up in oh, well, there you go. hasn't it? Yeah, it has, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we were playing that in the last tour and it was great. People loved it. All the TikTok kids got into it. Yeah, everyone it's knows got, the song, got, don't they? Well, everyone knows the song and, and you know, there's like thousands of TikTok videos that use our version of it. So mm. you know, that's cool. Kids are into it. It's uh, good to see a lot of Australiana in custard uh, titles over the years, yep. uh, Australian place names, Queensland University, Princess Highway, Warren Road. And on this mm-hmm. record, oh, dear, oh, dear, how do I approach this one? <laughs> Never loved <laughs> Melbourne, you bastards. Oh, uh, no. Yeah, yeah, look, I love Melbourne. I used to live in Melbourne. So that's a McCormack song, and, and I think David's a – David's become a Sydney boy, and he's uh, he, he's got a you know he's got that love hate thing with Melbourne that Sydney people have, but yeah. he loves it. You know, I never loved Melbourne, but now I do. So you know. yeah, well, you know who also lives in Melbourne? Hello, Winston. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah! You, you've got to love you've got to love Melbourne just for that. Just for that. Yeah. I never loved Melbourne until I saw you, Winston. Yeah. So if uh, Dave's now the Sydney sider then, is that where the uh, uh, Take Me Down to Rockdale Plaza, Cold Heart song came about? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's, you know, David just doing his local shopping, you know. So if, if you listen to that song, there's a, there's actual um, ambient recordings from Rockdale Plaza there. <laughs> so he, he went there with his mic and you know recorded some stuff. So yeah, yeah. No. So it, it, it's all very, uh, all, all very personal stories, personal experiences. A custard uh, live show, uh, like you open a lot of live shows with hit song, and uh, yeah. apartment tends to be a popular ending. Is that pretty much uh, how you work on a set list and then slide everything in between? Oh yeah, you know you got to give you got to give the people what they want, right? Everyone knows how a set list goes. You start off with a bit of a bang, then you you know build it up a little bit, then you do some boring stuff in the middle and get a bit self indulgent. Then the hits at the end, it's fine. And hit songs a good one to start with because it's so easy to play, so we all get to war- warm up a little bit. So mm. that that's more for us than anyone else. Well, you know, having a new album uh, has new challenges when it comes to putting a set list together, doesn't it? And I, I would imagine when you've got 21 new songs, as you're recording those 21 new songs and approaching the release of those 21 new songs, you must be aware that a lot of that album will never be in a set list ever. No, I know. I know. I know. That's okay. That's okay. I, I, I like them for what they are. Does that give you uh, a different approach in the studio then? When you go in knowing that a song uh, may never be performed live, it gives you licence to experiment more with that song. Yeah, I think we go into the studio with the idea that, you know, the song might not ever be finished or released or anything, you know. We're, there's really not a lot of thinking that goes into it. We just go, oh, well, all right, this is a song that sounds pretty good, let's give it a shot. You know, this, this song, we did 20 songs in two days at Frying Pan Studios, um, just whacked them down, not knowing what we would keep, what would be good, what would be okay. That's how we ended up with a double album because we couldn't throw anything out. It was all good. Seriously? 20 good. songs in it, two days? Yeah. Yeah. That's like yeah. how the Beatles used to record 
Well, 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 that, well, that, well, well, that was the idea. And, you know, so we're in frying, I don't know if you know this, but Frying Pan Studios at Mona down in Tasmania has the original Abbey Road Red 17 recording desk that the Beatles used on their oh, first wow. four albums. Yeah, yeah. So we we were recording through that direct, um, straight to tape, um, bypassing all the digital stuff. So we got all the kind of guitars, drums, bass down live through that desk to tape in two days. Um, and, yeah, we were absolutely going for that. Let's avoid the technology. Let's avoid overdubs. Let's just try and make it as raw and as live as possible, old-school Beatles style. And and we did, and I think I think that's the, the beautiful thing about this record. It's got a great vibe. So that's, that's an incredible thought, isn't it, that uh, the same uh, desk that created... Uh, I saw her standing there for the Beatles. Exactly. Has created this new album exactly. for Custard. Exactly. It's incredible. It's amazing. Yeah. It's mind blowing. Yeah. Like just standing there going, touching this thing that you know the Beatles probably, you know, ruled all over and whatever they did. But yeah. And then you see pictures of the Beatles, you know, sitting around this desk and, well, there's Custard sitting around this desk. So that's pretty cool because David and I are huge Beatles fans and that was kind of what got us together in the, in the first place. So uh, dream, dream stuff, fantasy right. stuff. And it's good, great yeah. to see it adds another Paul into the mix here. I'm a Paul, you're well, a Paul, it? your manager's right. Paul, a Paul, Paul, and Paul Paul's McCartney, everybody. the bass player in the Beatles, is a Paul. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> We've come full circle. <laughs> we have come full circle. <laughs> You're uh, about to head out on tour with the Foves. That's a great double act, yep. that. Custard and the yep, Foves. The Foves and, and, and Stress of Leisure from Brisbane are doing a lot of shows with us. Mm. So the, the, they're both bands we've, we've played a lot with, very comfortable with, always have a great time, um, very much looking forward to that tour. It's going to be fun. Well, pack your bags, Paul. It's uh, a long time on the road. Uh, well, it's going to pretty much take you up to Christmas, isn't it? If you finish Christmas, this yeah. tour, go home and open presents. Yeah, I know. Yeah, exciting. And then have <laughs> a big sleep, big, long sleep. It'll yeah, be great. sleep right through. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, good to uh, talk to you. Okay, Paul, thank you very much. Um, been a pleasure. <laughs>